This episode is funded by the Glick Fund and the Crystal DeHaan Family Foundation, who inspire philanthropy and creativity. We're here in New York City at the world-famous Majestic Theater, home of one of the longest-running Broadway musicals, Phantom of the Opera. We're gonna get to go behind the scenes to see what it takes to put this show on. Follow me. We are here behind the scenes of the Phantom of the Opera with Annette Lavis. Thank you so much for taking some time. Pleasure. Can you please just first tell us what you do here at Phantom of the Opera? I am the production, production seamstress here at Phantom. I've been in the wardrobe department for 23 years. Wow, so you got some so, experience. Yeah, I got a few things I know about the show, yeah. I have touched every costume in this building at least five times. That oh, is I for bet. sure, yes. Wow, now speaking of where are we, because since nobody else can see, what, what room are we in? We are in, we call this the stage right quick change room, and it is literally that. We are stage right, and it is where people get dressed really quickly when they have to get on and off stage when there's not a lot, a lot of time. Yeah. There are times when we have probably 12 actors in here, along with as many dressers. We have hair people, sometimes we have sound people, so this room gets pretty busy. Where do you even start coming up with the ideas and yeah. making all of this and creating it and figuring it out? Right. Well, we, our designer, Maria Bjornsson, she designed the entire show back in the 80s when it was new. She also took into consideration the set design, she did, you know, the lighting, everything works together as a unit, you know? So, but she designed all the clothes back then, and they're so descriptive that I can see, you know, the placement of each bead and the length of hems, like I, I can can really refer to them and we try to keep the show looking like day one as much as possible which is why I have a job still. One of the things that I'm amazed by even just looking around here is the intricate detail that I from the I know from the audience side of it I'm not appreciating fully so can you tell me like what what does it take like maintaining this stuff and what you know I, so much you're right and this show I mean is so opulent we have so many you know beads and buttons and sequins and fortunately we we have been around long enough that we have a pretty good stash of those things. Every day I come in and it's the first thing I do in the morning is replace whatever fell off during the show the night before, who got tangled up with whom, you know, who split their pants. Just happened last week. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so yeah, so all of this, all of this detail, we really check it over every single day. We have wardrobe people in every day before the show that inspect every costume and we literally do replace any missing bead, button, sparkle so that it looks like it did on day one. Things like this, um, Carlotta's dress, we've had to like change little things over time because we noticed that you know certain beads make too much noise and it gets picked up on the mic or certain things she kneels on they were glass but now they're plastic because they break so we do tweak a little you know little things over the years but we try to keep it as true to the original as possible. We use color as different absolutely than than film and TV. Um, you have to use a lot more bold colors. We oftentimes like we'll paint shadow into things so that they look like there's more depth you know, from a distance, absolutely. And like I said, we have to also be aware of the sound that things make. You know, things that jingle when you take them across the stage and get picked up on microphones and, um, you know, the, the, the way that they interact with other things on the stage. We can't have people with beads close to someone else who has something pointy, you know, because they'll get caught on each other. So we have to be really aware of not only how it looks, but how it's gonna function with what we need to do. And every actor will say too, you know, it's one thing to learn your lines and your choreography, but then when you put the costume on, it really helps them just become the character. You know, I, I often see people like just stand taller when they're in their suit or women get their, their posture changes when they're in a dress like this. And it has to, considering the size of them, the weight of them, the core sitting that they have. So it really like creates the full picture once they're in costume. You know, I'll share a funny story. So the first time I had a dress rehearsal in this skirt, Carlotta starts the show and she has this really big solo moment where I'm coming down stage, I'm the only one on the stage, I'm singing a cappella, meaning there's no music under me, it's just my voice. And in rehearsal, you know, that was easy and I would nail it. And the first time I wore this skirt, I made it halfway down the stage and I was like, <gasps> 
They said, that happens to everybody. You can start over. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, there was no one in the audience. Yeah, you're like, yeah, you're like, and yeah, that's why we rehearsed. That's why we rehearsed, to get used to it, absolutely. I'm looking at this, and I would love for you to tell me a little bit more about some of the pieces in here that we're looking at. Sure, sure. This room is divided up by character, believe it or not, and within each character, they're in order of when they wear them in the show. So it okay. kind of looks like a bit of a mess, but it's an organized yes, chaos yes, that yes, we have here. Okay. Yes. Um, here we have uh, Christine clothes. You know, we have two Christines. Um, they split up the week, so we have two sets of the same exact clothes. Um, this is one of my favorite dresses. This is Christine's rooftop dress, oh, which is beautiful, right? And she wears a big giant cape over it. So a lot of this, you don't even get to see how detail, you know, all the details and yeah, all the I mean, lace and the, yeah. The structure. What does something like that weigh? I mean, it looks really heavy. It's going to Oh my gosh, seriously, yeah. it's almost like, I'd say and at least this 10 is, pounds. This, this is nothing. Some of our costumes are really heavy. Carlotta's dress, we get her in it in this room because it's too big for her to walk around in. She just would never make it through the hallways in that dress. Yeah. Um, these are the Sylvan Glade dresses worn by our ballerinas, which when Maria designed them, I mean, it was really brilliant. Every layer underneath is a different color. So when they spin, you see all the different colors and they're, weight, they're weighted just so that they spin perfectly flat when they go around. Yeah, it was a really brilliant design. These are uh, the rest of Christine's clothes. This is her um, her uh, mausoleum dress. This fabric was made hand painted for this show back in the eight in 1980s um, in London. When who knew we were going to run this long, right? right? And now to get it, we have to still go back to the same company to get the same fabric. It is trademarked. It is the Christine fabric. Me? Yes. So like, yeah, these are like pieces of art, like in all aspects. They really are wearable. But. They really are, and the fabrics that were chosen in the beginning, you know, we didn't realize they'd have to last for 29 well, years. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we we really make our I make an effort to like make them live as long as they possibly yeah. can. So I, I've got to ask. So is that what I think it is up there? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So this is tell the, me about what it. everyone wants to know about, right? This is the Phantom's mask. Uh, these are made individually for each Phantom's face um, by Rodney Gordon. He's been making them since day one. No he make, there's a mold of the Phantom's face, and then he fits this on them, um, keeping special care to make sure the eye hole is big enough that it cuts around their mouth just the right way. Oh, and then yeah. this wire is molded to their head so that it doesn't move when it's on him because we can't have that phantom, you know, mess Yeah, and that's the last thing you want to think about. You got this, yeah. Absolutely. So, and there's a scene where uh, Christine rips the mask off his face, um, but we have to rehearse that for hours and hours to make sure that they don't pull off his prosthetics and his wig and everything with it. Oh so she takes it off in one very fluid motion, but we, we make sure that uh, that everything stays put yeah. where it needs to be. Yeah, it's layers of, it's, it's, it's polyurethane, it's leather, it's painted and yeah. airbrushed. I mean, it really, there's a lot of care that goes into these masks. Wow. You know what I love is like in every respect here, we're like, okay, so you see the artist and then there's like layers of artists mm -hmm. behind it, yep. right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Everything in this building gets touched by like five different people before the yeah. show starts, you know, because we want to make sure that it's just, just right. Well, Annette and Michelle, thank you so much for taking some time to show us like, wow, the in <laughs> incredible creativity and innovation you guys do. And then thank you're you. surrounded by a bunch of art in this room, which is so yeah. cool. Thanks for sharing we it. Yeah, very lucky. Thank you. Yes. Hey, did you know that subscribing to our channel is one of the most epic things you can do? That's right. Subscribe now, share our episodes, so that we can actually make more of these things. I'm not going to lie. I love showing you where creativity and innovation are happening. Get on board and be outrageous.